Hey guys, happy Friday and happy Faith Friday. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed last week. Uh, I know it was grim. I had some messages that said they really needed to hear that though. And uh, I'm glad that reached you. Uh, this week, we're going to bring things up a little bit more into a little bit more of a positive vibe. But I want to first start by asking you guys a question. Do you guys remember when you were young, when you were little, and uh, your parents would always, you know, have these rules, you know? <laughs> they were things we hated. They were, they were like, you can't do this, you can't do that. We were, we'd always, you know, rebel against them. We'd always, you know, you tell us not to do something, we're going to do it. You know, I remember, I remember a time when my mom was, uh, was in the kitchen and I was real little and I was right standing beside this plant and I was tempting my mom. I was like acting like I was going to tip this plant over. And uh, my mom's like, don't you dare tip that plant over. Don't you dare do it. And I tipped the plant over. Dirt went everywhere. It was a mess. And I just laughed. My parents probably thought I was a child from hell. <laughs> um, but we, did, we had all these things. We had all these rules that we were told not to do. And back then, you know, I'm sure, like, I, like me, I'm sure you rebelled as well. We were told not to do things for our safety, you know, like not stick our fingers in outlets. Uh, you know, not to run with scissors. These, these common sense things we know nowadays, but you know, our parents taught them to us. And our parents did this though to us, taught these things to us because they love us and they wanted the best for us. They wanted us to be safe. Well, many people don't know this, but the Bible, in the Bible, in the Gospels, Jesus teaches us a bunch of different things. And he is our Heavenly Father. You know, He is our, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Parent that watches over us. And many people just don't realize that there is teachings in the Gospels that can change the way you live your life. And they're, the, and they're, they're much more than rules. They're, they're much more than guidelines. They're, they're the way that we should be living life. And they're the way that equals to the most fulfilled life. The way to fulfillment, the way to, to heaven. These teachings are in the Bible. It's that easy. And the other day I was reading through this. I've read the Gospels a few times now. And uh, going through, the, through this, you know, Jesus at one time, and Matthew describes this as, Jesus was walking and a ton of people were following him. And they were climbing up and they were walking up this mountain. And it, it never says what mountain this was actually on. But he got to the top of this mountain and there was just a ton of people. And he told the people to sit down. And he just started preaching to them. And he told them a total of 22 things. And these 22 things are, are known as the Sermon on the Mount. And these 22 things are rules and guidelines, but much more than that, they are, they are ways that we can become closer to God and ways that we should be, we can follow God and ways that we can become closer to God. And he taught these things to us. And, and Matthew wrote them down for us. And he was a great writer. So they're very, they're pretty easy to comprehend. But they're not such so easy to comprehend in the, in the uh, looks of what they are to, the, to this day, you know, to the modern age. I feel like some of this stuff, the teachings that Jesus taught us are lost. So I decided to do the series, the Sermon on the, on the Mount, the reteachings of it in the modern uh, age of today, what they mean today, and how we can still fulfill these things. So this is the first of, a, of a many videos in the series. This is part one. We're going to teach three things today and reteach these three things that Jesus taught us. Jesus starts out by doing the blessings on the mountain. I'm just going to read through the blessings. Um, Jesus first gathered the people around him, and he taught them these blessings. God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those people who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those people who are humble. The earth will belong to them. God blesses those people who want to obey him more than to eat or drink. They will be given what they want. God blesses those people who are merciful. They will be treated with mercy. God blesses those people whose hearts are pure. They will see him. God blesses those people who make peace. They will be called his children. God blesses those people who are treated badly for doing right. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. So he starts out by saying this, and then God, God will bless you when people insult you, mistreat you, and tell all kinds of evil lies about you. Because of me, be happy and excited. You will have a great reward in heaven. People did these same things to the prophets who lived long ago. 
So after the blessings, Jesus basically starts talking to them. And they're titled as different things. Matthew titles, titles them as a different section, each one. Today we're going to talk about three of these things. The first one is titled Salt and Light. You are like salt for everyone on earth. But if salt no longer tastes good, like salt, how can it make food taste salty? All it is good for is to be thrown out and walked on. You are like light for the whole world. A city built on top of a hill cannot be hidden, and no one would light a lamp and put it under a clay pot. A lamp is placed on a lampstand where it can give light to everyone in the house. Make your light shine so that others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. How many of you like salt? I love salt. I talk about the benefits of salt all the time through health and fitness. Salt is great for a person. You know, salt for us workout people give us, gives us excellent pumps, you know, and just like salt is so good for food and it makes food taste good, we are the salt of the land. God wants us to be good. God wants us to spread the good news, be good to others. Let that shine for others so others will follow you and do that onto others. Create this chain reaction. You don't just put one flake of salt on food to make it taste good. You use a salt shaker and you sprinkle salt till you're happy. And if you're like me, you put a lot of salt on your food because you want it to taste good. God put tons of salt on this land. Tons. To so many people. He wants us to be the best people that we can be to bring others to be better. And for those people to be make us be better. Salt makes salt taste good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, a few flakes of salt taste more better than one flake of salt. God wants us to be good people. And the sad thing is there's no such thing as good people. But he wants us to be the best people that we can be. And just like in the second part of this, light, you know, you are like a light for the whole world. You know, God made us to shine, shine onto others. And nowadays, we can do this easier than ever. Social media videos, YouTube, do what God wants us to do. God spoke to me and told me to reteach these teachings. That's why I'm doing this, you know, because when I was reading through this, God spoke to me and, and I, I, I realized that I understood these things just so much clearer. And God spoke to me and said, spread this to others. And I was thinking, YouTube. So I did this. He wants you to do the same thing. I am not a chosen one. <laughs> I am just one that God speaks to. And God speaks to you too. You just have to listen for it. And he will tell you what to do. And he wants you to spread the good news. He wants you to preach to others. He wants you to spread life to others. And this is what it's saying. You know, right here, make your light shine so that others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. Social media. Use Instagram. You know, Instagram can be a double-edged sword. It can be totally evil and make you depressed, but it can also bring joy and gratefulness. A little, uh, a few weeks ago, you know, I cleared out a lot of my Instagram queue. I was following a lot of, a lot of ridiculous things that didn't bring me close to God, and it's it's things that you know were. It just brought me farther away. It, it, you log on to Instagram, and you can see who you follow. I started following more, you know, godly accounts, more Christ accounts, more accounts that post good things, messages, you know, people who post scriptures. Use social media for that. Follow those people and then not just follow those people, but share those things. Every Sunday, I make sure and share a lot of Christ things. I don't like to post a lot of fitness stuff on my account on Sundays because Sunday is the day of Sabbath, the day of rest, the day, the holy day. And I, I, I make sure that that one day is dedicated to God. My social media is dedicated to God. And we can do that every day. We can spread this. So just like salt makes food taste good, make and bring the good news to others and make other people believe and bring that faith to others. The second thing God te Jesus teaches on this mountain is titled the law of Moses. Don't suppose that I came to you to do away with the law and the prophets. I did not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. Heaven and earth may disappear, but I promise you that not even a period or a comma will ever disappear from the law. Everything written in it must happen. 
If you reject even the least important command in the law and teach others to do the same, you will be the least important person in the kingdom of heaven. But if you obey and teach others its commands, you will have an important place in the kingdom of heaven. You must obey God's commands better than the Pharisees and the teachers, the law, obey him. Then the, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law that obey them. If you don't, I promise you that you will not even get into the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. So the law of Moses, a lot of people think this is actually just a law. You know, a lot of people think this is just the Ten Commandments. When they see this, they think the Ten Commandments, you know, Moses got them from God. That's the law. The law of Moses is actually the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And in Hebrew, this is called the Torah, you may have heard of. This is the law of Moses, the five, first five books of the Bible. It's not all the law. When you read it, there is a lot of law in it. Leviticus is the law. I mean, you read Leviticus and there's like, do not do this, do not do this. It's a law. But the combination of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is the teachings of the beginning and where the people suffered and the Israelites suffered in Egypt and then God rescued them. It's a message of hope. It's a foreshadow to everything that later happens in the gospel. Things were ter- things were great when God created them. Then things got bad when people, you know, started disobeying God and believing in these other gods. But then God, they they came to God. They God rescued them, just like what happens later in the Bible when Jesus dies for us. This is a foreshadow to that. Jesus is saying that He did not come to do away with the law. The Pharisees they hated Jesus. A lot of them hated Jesus because. They thought that he came and he, they, they heard that he was calling himself the son of God and they thought, this is an outrage. Our God is God. There is no other gods. It's taught in the law that there are no other gods. How can this Jesus be the son of God? And can you blame him? If somebody came right now and started saying they were the son of God and doing these miraculous, miraculous things, you would be, you'd be thinking this through and you'd be like, I don't know about this. God teaches me to only trust him. And if my instincts are not trusting this person that claims he's God, he must be from the devil. That's what these Pharisees thought. It's later said, you know, how Jesus thought that the only person who could take demons out of people was the demon master, the the head of the demons. The Pharisees said this. The Pharisees basically thought that Jesus was evil and they were against him. And you kind of feel this, this uh, sorrow for them because you realize that in today's time, if this happened, you would kind of think the same thing. I know I would. God teaches you to have no other gods. So if we start thinking somebody on this earth is God, dude, you see right there, there's a problem with that. So at the same time, you know, Jesus did not come to do away with the law. People think they, 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 that he did. People think that he was disobeying the law for the things he was doing, the things he was saying, but he was there to make the law and tell the law the true meanings that the law was meant to tell. The foreshadowing that it was originally foreshadowed for, the coming of Christ, that is why he came. To teach that, to teach that he is the Savior because of everything we do. But he's also saying, you know, Jesus did die for our sins. But he still intends for us to keep those commandments that he originally gave to us. They weren't just there for no reason. They were there for a reason. We must still follow them to the best of our ability. And if we break them, we must truly ask for forgiveness for them because we know we did wrong. The third thing that God, Jesus talks about on the mountain is uh, it's titled anger. You know that our ancestors were told, do not murder, and a murderer must be brought to trial. But I promise you that if you are angry with someone, you will have to stand trial. If you call someone a fool, you will be taken to court. And if you say that someone is worthless, you will be in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are about to place your gift on the altar and remember that someone is angry with you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Make peace with that person, then come back and offer your gift to God. Before you are dragged into court, make friends with the person who has accused you of doing wrong. If you don't, you will be handed over to the judge and then to the officer who will put you in jail. I promise you that you will not get out of jail until you have paid the last cent you owe. There are many parts to this one. Three paragraphs. And the first paragraph has 
three different meanings. So Jesus wants us to know anger in general leads to hell. There's no other way around it. Hell, anger is a sin. No matter any way you look at it, anger is a sin. Jesus did not intend for anger to be there at all. And in the first part of that first paragraph where Jesus says, but I promise you that if you are angry with someone, you will have to stand trial. People are thinking trial. They're thinking, okay, the government, you're going to be standing. No, Jesus is foreshadowing what's going to come at the end of times, the coming of Christ, the coming back of Christ, um, the, you know, God judging us at the very end. Just being angry with someone you're going to have to be in trial in front of God at the very end of times. Just being angry at someone. So these grudges that you hold from your past, from people you've gotten in fights with in your past, you're going to have to come to terms with that before the coming of before the end of come before the end of times. You're going to have to forgive that person. Your people who have hurt you. You know, I, I I have people in my past that really you know really pissed me off you know, and really caused me anger and hurt. But I have forgiven them. I have forgiven the grudges. I, I have let the grudges go because that's what Jesus wants us to do. It's hard to do that. The second part of that is saying right here, if you call someone a fool, you will be taken to court. He, a fool is judged, a fool in, in the Bible is someone who is labeled as wrong, an idiot, dumb, not knowledgeable, not wise. You know, you read Proverbs and Solomon talks about being a fool is this, being a fool is this. It's not a good thing. Just calling someone a fool, just judging someone of doing wrong is a bad thing. I'm guilty of this, man. I judge people all the time. I, 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 I judge people all the time for, you know, I, I've, I've read the law, you know, the original five books of the Bible, and I see things in there and I'm thinking... People are just doing all this wrong shit. There's all this wrong in the world. And you, you look at these people and that are doing this wrong, committing adultery and or you know, or doing things as such as, you know, being gay and things like that. And I, I judge them. I, I I'm like, that ain't right. That ain't right. That's not how Jesus wants us to live. It's not my place to judge though. And I still do it. It's it's I still do it to this day. I still judge others. And I, I'm aware of that. And I'm, it's something I'm trying to fix. But Jesus doesn't want us to judge, to judge others. He's saying right here, the only judge is God. Judge, jury, executioner. That is God, not us. Anytime we just, you know, say or say someone, you know, even just driving down the road and somebody pulls out in front of you and you're like, that dipshit you're basically calling God a dipshit because guess what? God made that person and God intentionally had him pull out in front of you. Now, people do have free will, let me say that. But what I'm saying is God makes us all for a reason. And if we say somebody is a dipshit, we're basically saying, God, you're a dipshit for, for creating this person. That's what we're saying. And that's what we're saying when we judge others. It's hard. Trust me, this is one of the hardest things I, I deal with. I judge others a lot, and I'm trying to work on that. The last part of that, and if you say that someone is worthless, you will be in danger of the fires of hell. This is one of the worst things you can do, telling someone they're worthless. You're basically saying, God, you are worthless to have created this person. That's what you're saying. When you're saying that someone has no meaning in life, even the people that don't do shit in life, even the, even the people that, you know, do drugs and cause people harm and are, are so-called evil, and you call them worthless, you're just calling God worthless because God created them. And Jesus is telling us this. He, 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 he's saying, you know, leave this, leave your thoughts, leave your feelings, and cast them onto me. Cast them onto Jesus because God will take those, you know, he, <laughs> it, it's, it's powerful stuff, but it's, it's hard to follow at the same time, especially in the day and age we live in these days. It's so hard. Anger is such a difficult thing. The last part of the paragraph of this is before you are dragged in court, into court, make friends with the person who accused you of doing wrong. And if you don't, you will be handed over to the judge. 
Jesus is basically giving us a tip for life here. And it's a strong tip. It's basically saying if you don't make peace with the person who did you wrong or the person you did wrong unto others, you can't expect a good outcome of that. Jesus is basically saying, let other people, you know, forgive you and you forgive the other person and peace will come out of that. Going into, going to trial, before you go to trial, before you go against each other, come to peace with each other and solve the, solve the problem at hand, forgive each other, and then let the trial proceed for what you did wrong. That's what God intends for us to do. So those are the first three things I want to cover in part one. Uh, we're already at 20 minutes. So as you can see, these teachings, these teachings went on, 22 teachings. So this is, this series is going to take us a while. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series. I'm doing this because these teachings are so important. And so many of us break them, including myself. This anger one, it's one of the things I struggle with most. It's letting go of grudges on people, letting go of these, uh, of judging people. It's so hard to do, and it's something that I'm constantly in battle with. But I, I know that, you know, God teaches us these things through the Bible to make us a better person because he knows who we truly are, and he's truly always trying to make us better. So that's uh, the first ser video of this series. Give me, a com give me a comment down below if you guys are enjoying this. Give me a like if you guys enjoy the video. I will keep these coming no matter what because even if I reach five people, that's five people co that come closer to God, and that's better than nothing. So thank you guys, and see you next week. Have a good weekend. God bless.